one of the problems potentially with fantasy as a genre, not always, but sometimes, potentially. Um, see, I've never been all that big of a fan of fantasy outside of Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones I'm a really big fan of, but outside of that, never been all that crazy about fantasy in general. And one of the potential problems when you're dealing with fantasy is that the author, the writer, if they're not careful, if they're lazy, can introduce fantastical elements into the narrative. And then if they're not careful and they don't really pay close attention, those fantastical elements will cause conflicts or problems for the characters, dramatic conflicts. But they can be solved really easily by just introducing other fantastical elements just to solve them. For example, in Game of Thrones, you have the 700-foot wall of ice. So it could go something like this. Wow, there's a 700-foot wall of ice. What are we going to do? Well, good news. I just prayed to the Lord of Light, and he gave us a 700-foot hairdryer, and now we can melt the wall of ice. Oh, good. That's how it sometimes goes down in other fantasies other than Game of Thrones. And the other potential problem is that the authors who are not paying close attention build a reality for you and then violate the reality at will. So it dramatically undercuts the stakes of what you are watching. Now, Game of Thrones has avoided that a lot. One of the ways it avoids it, particularly when it was back dealing with, the, when it was working off of the books, because George R. R. Martin is actually really, really, really fastidious about getting details right and making those details... Um, having the characters inhabit his story and actually the details affect the story. Most other writers ignore this. He uses it all the time. For example, way back in like season one, um, Tyrion is saved by Bronn. Bronn, you know, Bronn fights, uh, fights somebody for Tyrion and, and saves him. And then they wind up walking <laughs> from the castle. Most other authors wouldn't even think about that. They have to get back to King's Landing. They have to walk. And then that introduces all these other dramatic problems. They, they come across this group who wants to kill them. and then he, See, he was really, really good at that, at letting the reality of the situation, dealing with the actual reality of the world that is being inhabited, affect the characters and affect the narrative in dramatic and interesting ways, and then keeping the reality that he had laid down. So, for example, uh, one of the storylines, you know, they go to the Iron Bank. To, to, because armies, you need money to fund an army. No other, almost no other writer would ever think about stuff like that. They just kind of have their characters show up where they're needed and armies appear where they're needed and things like that. Martin was actually really, really good at building the entire reality. So, where am I going with this? Okay, this is what I pointed out last week. He, the, the show itself, had led us to believe that a dragon was a... Um, a game-changingly powerful weapon of warfare in this type of an environment. That's what the show itself had told us. Way back with Jorah and um, when she was first acquiring the, the Unsullied, Jorah says to her, she was, it looked like she was going to trade a dragon for the army. He said to her, a dragon in Khaleesi is worth way more than an army. Those were his exact words. So we had been led to believe that a dragon was a game-changingly powerful weapon of warfare in this environment. Now, turns out that it is. So that's exactly what happened. And this is what I was saying last week. When, when uh, Euron shot one of the dragons out of the sky, I was thinking, well, she's on Drogon. Why don't she just flank the ships and burn them all to the ground? Because we've been led to believe that that's exactly what the dragon could do. So that's what the dragon did this week, just like I thought it could. But, you know, other writers would... The reason why it didn't do it last week is, again, sloppy writing. It made more sense last week that Drogon just flanks the ships, burns them all to the ground, and, you know, that could have very easily happened last week. R.R. Martin would have had it last week. Why? It was organic to the story. And then it, the other writers avoided it because it now would create a potential problem. How are we going to end it? You know, he didn't think that way. He just have the... the have the reality of the characters and the situation organically happen, and then he deal with it with you know as it would create new dramatic conflicts and new things. That's why he was such a good storyteller. 
Honestly, he, he would have had the dragon do exactly what the dragon should have done last week. Burn all the ships to the ground. And then found a different problem that that creates. Um, so, in light of that, it was, you know, what happened this week, okay, I'm a, fairly alone in this. I've watched a lot of things online. Um, almost routinely everybody hates what happened this week. And I understand why, but as a story arc, okay, Daenerys becoming the Mad Queen, it kind of works as a story. It made sense, and it had been accounted for all throughout the, the, the years we had been watching her. Right from the beginning. She, yes, she had a gentle side, and she was potentially a very benign ruler, but she also had a ruthless side, and it veered over into cruelty more than once in the past. Now, uh, this is rumor, I don't know this for a fact, but the rumor is that her becoming the Mad Queen, that's his idea, that's George R. R. Martin gave them the story outline, and they're, that's what the writers of the show are adhering to. Now, so as a story arc, it's fine, but in the context of the show we're watching, it happened way too quickly. It wasn't believable, it didn't make any sense, you know, it was like one... Two episodes ago, she's good. <laughs> she's, she's helping win the war against the White Walkers. Then all of a sudden, one or two things happen and she snaps. And those things were nowhere near as bad as some of the things that have happened to her in the past in this show that we've been watching. So it wasn't really accounted for very well. It's, it's a fine as a narrative arc. Daenerys Targaryen turns into the Mad Queen just like her father and burns the whole city to the ground. It's kind of interesting as a narrative arc, but it didn't really work in context of the show that we had been watching because it wasn't well, well predicated. It wasn't really accounted for in her character. So it wasn't all that believable and it didn't really work. It wasn't organic to anything we had seen. And Various, too, acted way out of character. I mean, he didn't think that he was going to get caught. He, you know, episodes past, people pointed out he was just one of the smartest characters on the show. Now he's just dumb. Oh, I don't know that she could potentially catch me for betraying her and kill me. <laughs> Never occurred to me. You know, that's just not the type of thing that he would have done. And it's not, it's not organic to the character. Now, so those are some of the potential problems. Having said that, you know, there's... There, I, I tend to be alone in really kind of liking the episode. Why? Because the 13 year, there's a 13-year-old boy in me watching these shows sometimes. And sometimes Game of Thrones plays right to the 13-year-old boy. You know, the dragon burning the city down. Oh, my God, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Seriously, that's how I was feeling when I was watching. I can't believe Drogon's burning the city. This is so awesome. If my wife were home, I would have driven her crazy. I would have driven her crazy. I would have been like, oh, my God, Jen, it's so awesome. The dragon's burning the city down. The dragon's burning the city. It's so awesome. And it was so cool as spectacle. It was so cool as spectacle. I mean, they did such a good job of making it look really like, you know, what, a dra what would happen if a dragon actually lit up an entire city and started smoking everybody and there's buildings crumbling and people crying and running and it was so chaotic and fire. It was great. As spectacle, it was absolutely off the charts awesome. So uh, <laughs> seriously, it was so fun to watch. Um, as a story, you know, the story is getting, it's getting weak. The show writers are nowhere near as good as he is, and they're nowhere near as good as keeping the reality of what you're watching and, and having it logically follow from scene to scene, character to character. You know, they do a lot of stuff that's lazy. But as spectacle, A+. A++. It was one of the coolest things I've seen on TV. And, you know... Everyone's trashing the show, and I kind of agree with all the criticism, but outside of the criticism, honestly, it's still, it was still the best thing on TV this year, I'm pretty sure. I can't think of anything I watched that was better. So yeah, the show has declined visibly over the years, and it didn't quite make sense that she turned into the Mad Queen, and it was a little bit kind of like, where did you out? It was kind of unsatisfying because it was just sort of out of left field, but... Having said that, I still thought it was a really cool episode because of the quality of the spectacle in front of me and how awesome it was to watch the dragon burn him. I mean, that's exactly what I thought a dragon was supposed to do. That's what we were told a dragon was going to do. In warfare, it was invaluable. It was, a, it was a weapon of mass destruction. It could you know, burn a whole fleet to the ground and burn a city to the ground, burn whole armies. 
And that's exactly what it did. And it was really fun to watch. I mean, I really just, it was, I thought it was awesome to watch. So in that sense, I loved it. Um, you know, outside of that, I'm with most of the complaints. I get it. You know, it's not the same. This used to be a really character-built show with solid, with solid motivations and really deep character work, and that's kind of gone by the wayside, and it's opted for spectacle. But as spectacle, it was really good. So I still give it a solid B, maybe, B+. Plus. Still kind of the best thing I've seen on TV this year. Um, that's all I'm saying up for now. Amen.